Let's stick with that 2020 race because our next guest says Bernie Sanders is not likely to beat Trump and Mike Bloomberg and Pete Buttigieg are not viewed as bomb throwers. Joining us now on the phone is SMH Group Chairman and CEO George Ball. And George, I know you put forth a few different scenarios, uh, what might happen if so-and-so wins the White House and Congress is Democrat or Republican. But first off, I want to ask, with Mike Bloomberg now appearing to be a possible frontrunner in the Democratic primary, would Wall Street be happy with the president Bloomberg. Wall Street would welcome a president Bloomberg uh, because he's a capitalist uh, and he's uh, sane. Uh, his policies on taxes, taxing uh, securities trades and the like are actually more problematic than, than some of the others. However, uh, much of market reaction, much of investment reaction, psychological. Bloomberg comes from Wall Street, comes from Solomon Brothers. He's a known quantity. Wall Street would welcome, I think Wall Street would embrace a presidential candidate or a president Bloomberg. George, when you pull back and look at potential results that could come in November, how do you think investors are calculating the political risk? Is it a divided government? Is it more gridlock? What do you think is at the top of the political risk? One, one of the indicators that investors today are looking at very closely is the probability weighted risk or opportunity of Republican president, Democratic president, divided or uh, uh, single-party Congress. And there are actually uh, collaborations between political pollsters and Wall Street pundits that combine those, those two uh, matrices. The best thing of all for most people would be a, a Republican president and a split uh, uh, Congress. That is the most benign for an odd reason. It moves government much more to the sidelines and leaves the course, the pace, the flow of business, of investment, of, of job creation up to the uh, people who run businesses, uh, the people who are the dynamic drivers of, of the society. We make a mistake sometimes in thinking that prosperity or inequality or the, mar the markets are determined by the president by the government uh, to some extent with it with fetters if we leave uh, the uh, growth of the nation to the people of the nation we're probably better off all right we're going to leave it there george ball ceo of smh group thanks so much for joining us on the phone today I want to uh, broaden this now to our panel. I know, uh, Kristen, earlier you talked about how important this night is also for Joe Biden. I mean, mm -hmm. he needs to come out strong here. He continues to lose momentum. He's counting on South Carolina coming through for him. He could be the next one to drop out. So here's the thing. Joe Biden continues to do pretty well in the polls, despite the fact that with these primaries and these caucuses, he is not at all performing well at all. Um, to that point about what Emily was talking about a little bit earlier, we see this split within the Democratic Party, right? You see this coalescing around the more moderate candidates. Bloomberg would obviously join that camp along with Klobuchar and along with Buttigieg and Biden as well. Um, and the split between Bernie and Warren. Warren largely falling off mm. right now. She's not she's not doing incredibly well. I think Biden right now looking at those polls and seeing that sort of popularity and that support around the more moderate candidates might decide to really hang in there just a little bit longer. We talk a lot about Iowa, New Hampshire, Nevada, South Carolina, but in reality, when you look at the totality of the number of delegates that are going to be handed out, over 35 percent are going to be awarded on Super Tuesday. And that's the whole mm -hmm. point behind Bloomberg's strategy mm -hmm. to focus on those states instead of these early voting but, states. But also I think what's interesting to watch is something you pointed out earlier, too. Now we're going into states that are much more diverse mm -hmm. and the issues are going to be different. The voter profile is much more different as well. I mean, doesn't that suggest that somebody like a Biden could do a little better in those states? And are you surprised at how well Michael Bloomberg is doing right. despite the questions around stop and frisk? So I think the questions around Bloomberg and, and stop and frisk and even beyond that, some of his comments that have recently resurfaced that he's made about um, black and Hispanic mm -hmm. men, particularly in the workplace, you're definitely going to see that. Well, he's not on the Nevada ballot, right? So right now it, it doesn't matter. That's absolutely going to matter for states like New York, 
California, Georgia, um, that are going to be voting March 3rd and, and beyond. Um, but I think Biden is counting on that support. He, he's talked a lot and he's thrown a lot of money, as Eugene was saying to us a little bit earlier, he's thrown a lot of money and also just time and effort in South Carolina, where he has done historically mm -hmm. pretty well uh, with black voters. And I think he's counting on that to get him, not over the finish line, but to at least, at least boost to, his to, standing through, through, a little bit. Through Super yeah. Tuesday, if he has the money to continue right. to do it. Hey, investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.